Okay, so today we're going to go ahead and we are going to create a one quarter uh, inch diameter hex bolt with 28 threads per inch for the thread dimension. Okay, uh, and we're going to create it one inch long. Uh, we're going to actually also build it so that the hexagonal head is down and then the threaded portion is being extruded upward. Okay which means we're going to be starting uh, a sketch on this top plane. So we're going to click on sketch, click on the top plane. I'm going to rotate the top view to look at it straight on. I'm going to use this polygon tool right here to click in the center first and click to draw a polygon. If you notice, I'm going straight up. That's why there's that little dashed vertical line and even that little vertical constraint icon. Click to make it stay. Now, if you notice, if I move my mouse upward, the number of sides of the polygon increase. But if I move my mouse downward, it decreases. We want to move our mouse so that there are six sides, hence a hexagon. Click again to make it stay. Um, if you wanted to change it, no, you could um, hit escape once to get out of that tool. And you can just double click on this 6x. Um, and you can edit and modify the number of sides if you want to. Okay. All right, so our next step, though, is we need to dimension the size of our hexagon. We're going to measure it by uh, what we call a cross flat. So I'm going to click on one side, click on the other side that's directly across, click to make it stay. And we have a diameter that's a quarter of an inch, but again, that's of the threaded portion, which means the head of the hex bolt needs to be larger. We're going to make it a half of an inch, so I'm going to type in 0.5. Uh, and there you go. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it a little bit better. That looks good. I'm done with that sketch. Green check. Click to make it kind of isometric. That way I can see it. Um, and we're going to now extrude this hexagon. We're not going to go all the way an inch. Again, it's just the head of the bolt, which means um, in our case, we're probably going to be around 3 sixteenths of an inch. Um, so I'm going to type that in. I'm going to click once in this open space. When you do that, um, it will give you a preview. And that's the same thing basically for any feature, most features, uh, just so that you can get a preview first. And that looks accurate. So I'm going to click on the green check to confirm. Our next step is we need to create a sketch on this top plane right here. So on the kind of the underside technically of our hex bolt. And part of the reason for that is I'm going to click on it. I'm going to click on the top view, move in, um, and we're going to draw a circle. And again, we're just drawing the basic shape. Here's our circle. Click to make it stay. If you notice, I started it again at the origin. That's to keep everything symmetrical, everything uh, nice, even, and accurate. Uh, and if you notice now, when I click to finish drawing the circle, the box popped um, visible around the dimension and we want to change it to a quarter of an inch so 0.25 okay and hit enter there's our diameter in our circle hit the green check to confirm I'm going to again rotate it so that we can view it uh, 3d why because now at this point we are going to be extruding it okay so click on extrude click on that circle it's going to go up about an inch um, and that's how long we want. You could make it more bolts sometimes are more or less than that, but we want it to be an inch uh, for our exercise because it just helps with understanding uh, the measurements and calculations a little bit better. So click on the green check to confirm. There is the basic shape of our bolt, but we're going to add a few features that um, are more realistic and professional, which is a typical bolt head does not have these really pointed uh, corners. And in addition to that, this cylindrical portion, that typically is threaded, right? So we're gonna be adding those two things. So let's get started. So go ahead and rotate your view cube so that you can see kind of this underside, which is technically the top head of the bolt. And I'm gonna click on create 2D sketch or create sketch, click on that side, and then click on the bottom view cube. So again, I can look at it straight on zoom in we're going to draw two circles but you need to make sure when you draw these circles that you're starting at the origin so i'm going to click to make it start start it i'm going to go over to the edge of 
my hexagon. And if you notice, the tangent icon pops up and also it's connecting to the midpoint, okay? It's called an inscribe circle. So click to make it stay. We're gonna draw one more circle that's a little bit larger. Click to make it stay. And I'm gonna change that dimension to be one, okay? So that the diameter of that larger circle is one. And again, I'm just kind of evening and rounding it out. Uh, and for right now, those are the only two shapes we need to kind of shave off these corners, okay? So go ahead and click on Finish Sketch. I'm also, again, going to rotate it a little bit and kind of this hit this corner of the view cube and zoom in a little bit so you can kind of see what is going to happen. Again, I'm going to be selecting these like corners and shave them off, but there's going to be an extra step to it, so make sure to pay attention. Click on Extrude. I'm going to click on this shape, but again, we don't want to add. We want to actually remove. Um, and we also would like to remove, so I'm going to click here because I need to select more faces. Click, click on that face, click on that one, and if you notice, they're all being outlined in yellow. And also, if you notice, after I click on all corners, if I rotate it, it basically turned it into a cylindrical head of a bolt or screw. We don't want that, right? Um, we, again, we're only trying to kind of shave off the corner, not the entire edge. So we're going to use this tool called Draft. So click on Draft. Um, and if you notice, it kind of had and caused the edge to kind of move inward. Um, we actually want to switch that. We want to reverse it. So we want it to move outward. So I'm going to click on this icon right there. And if you notice now, it kind of drafts it, or some people use taper it outward. And we also want to make a much larger angle. Why? Because it's shaving off a lot. We only want it to shave off just those corners. That's it. So instead of three degrees, we're going to write 60 degrees. And I'm going to click again in this open space to get a preview. So click once. There's my preview. So if you notice now, these edges are back right here um, and right there and right there. But down here, if you look, this corner and these corners have been just kind of shaved off a little bit, right? So it's rounded. It's a little bit more of a uh, more professional look and finish to the bolt. So that looks good. Hit the green check to confirm. There is my hex bolt head. We're going to do the same thing on the underside of the hex bolt head. Again, why? Because there's these really sharp corners there, okay? So I'm going to click on Create New Sketch, click on this underside flat surface of the hex bolt head. I'm going to click on the top view now to kind of view it head on or straight on. And I'm going to draw those two circles again, same steps. Click on Circle, click on the center, make sure you're starting in the center. Move your mouse out. You want to create that inscribed circle first. Then I'm going to click on the center again, and I'm going to create the larger circle. Okay, and remember that larger circle we put at one inch. Again, just to keep it consistent. Now I'm going to go ahead, click on Finish Sketch. I'm going to rotate it so that I can see it a little bit better to make sure and confirm that we will be extruding it correctly. So now click on Extrude. We are going to be removing faces, so I'm going to click on that shape, this little corner, that corner, this corner. See how now they're kind of shaving it off, and it's starting to turn into a cylindrical piece again, which we don't want, right? So we're going to click on this draft tool to angle it. But again, if you notice, it's still it's kind of cutting it inward, and we don't want that. We want it to go in the opposite direction. So click on that little arrow, and we also want the angle to be much larger because we only want it to cut off just that corner. So change it to 60, hit enter, okay? There is your hex bolt head, nice and neat. So I'm going to click on the green check to confirm because it looks, my preview looked good, and there you go so far. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead, click on this arrow down, go back to the isometric view. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Looking good so far. Now our next step is we need to add the thread, okay? So we're gonna use a new tool, and this new tool is called a helix. 
Does everyone see this little icon right here? It almost looks like a spring. It actually is how you also create a spring in the program. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and click on it. I'm going to go ahead and click on this face or this cylindrical face. Again, that's what it's asking you to click on. So I'm going to go ahead and select it. Um, and right now you only see, let's see, there's one, looks like two, three, four rotations around, right? But remember, we wanted 28. That's 28 threads. That means we wanted it to spin around 28 times um, within one inch. And remember, this whole thing is one inch, okay? So I can change this directly to 28. And the reason why I can, again, is because we made that length of this cylinder one inch long, okay? I'm going to click to get a preview, and that's good. If you had a different length, like the, the length of this threaded part was like an inch and a quarter or whatever it was, but you still had this 28 uh, threads per inch, you could also change this turns feature to the pitch. And you could type in the pitch. Now the pitch, it's not the number 28. Technically, to calculate pitch, it's 1 divided by the number of threads per inch, which is 28. So I'm going to click in the open space to get a preview. And look, there's all those 28 threads. If you want to count them, you can go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is right now because um, it looks accurate and we checked it before. Uh, I'm going to click on the green check to confirm it. But we aren't done because if you notice, all that really did was draw a helix. It just drew a line. Okay, it's kind of like a, almost like a 3D sketch, right? So what we have to do next is we need to draw a shape that starts at this beginning point right here of the helix, meaning of the spiral that goes down. Uh, because eventually we're going to be using our sweep tool to kind of sweep and cut a shape out, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and click once on that corner and if you notice when I zoom out that's going to be on this front plane so I'm going to click on the front plane and that means that's the plane if I even kind of rotate it and view it yep it's going directly on that point so that means that's the plane that I need to draw a sketch on so I clicked it to highlight it I'm going to click on create new sketch and now we're creating a sketch on that front plane so I'm going to go ahead and click here. I need to zoom in. Okay. There's again, that beginning part of the helix. And now we are going to be drawing a triangle. The reason why we're going to draw a triangle is because remember, um, the thread of a screw, right. Um, or a thread of a bolt, any sort of thread on that sort of attachment, um, hardware device. Uh, it's remember it's a, it's an angled, it's a wedge, right? It's a it's an inclined plane. Um, and so we're going to be drawing a triangle and then cutting that out all the way down as it spins around. Okay. So let's use the line tool. I'm going to draw though a vertical line first. So make sure you see that vertical icon. Don't worry about the size quite yet. Um, I'm just drawing a uh, triangle, but I did make that line vertical. Okay. Our next step is we need to make each of the sides equal. The reason being is because most threads are at about a, a 60 degree angle, which means the triangle needs to, each angle within there needs to be 60 degrees. So I'm going to click on one, click on the next side, click on that same side that you finished on, click on the third side. So now this is an equilateral triangle, which means all sides and all angles are equal. Now our next step is, um, if I escape out of that constraint tool, if you notice, if I click and hold, I can move this triangle anywhere, okay? So we need to attach it to something. And where we're going to attach it, we are going to attach this point to the starting point of our helix. Remember, we need those two touching in order to use the sweep tool. So the only challenge, though, is this helix is on a different sketch plane than this. So we're going to have to use, instead of this tool, we have to use this pierce tool. So go ahead and click on that. I'm going to click on the point, and I'm going to click on that point, the helix. Okay? Click. If you notice, they will move 
over. There you go. All right, so, so far that's good. I'm gonna exit out of that tool, but again, it still technically can move. It will stay an equilateral triangle, but it will get bigger or smaller. So how in the world do we know how big it needs to be? Here's how we know. We already figured out the pitch, right? Um, meaning we know the number of threads per inch. That should be the length of this distance. So I'm gonna click on this dimension tool, click on here, click here. And remember we have one inch that's divided by 28 threads, okay? Per that one inch. Um, and hit enter and you get 0 0.036. Now I'm gonna change it slightly. The reason being, I'm gonna make it a little bit smaller and you will need to do this too, is because um, there's gonna be a little conflict um, if you keep it that way when you kind of thread it and do the sweep tool. And again, this also deals with tolerances in the real world, right? Um, realistically, it's never gonna be able to kind of be cut exactly. They get pretty close. Um, but you have to account for, uh, you or you have to account for those tolerances. So I'm going to click on here. So instead of 0 0.036, I'm going to change it to a little bit smaller, which is 0 0.035. So it's only one, uh, one thousandth of an inch smaller. So if you notice when I hit enter, it's not going to really change it very much. It's going to be really hard to even see it. Yep. You couldn't even, oh, barely. It's a teeny tiny move, right? So there's our dimension 0 0.035. And because it's an equilateral triangle, all the other sides are the same, okay? So now what I need to do is I am done with that sketch. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna click on finish sketch. I'm gonna rotate it um, so that I can see it in 3D so that you can kind of see what is about to happen. Because now we are gonna use our sweep tool, right? The first, blue box that pops up and says that you need to click basically on the face and sketch region region that you want to sweep, which is this triangle, right? We want that triangle to cut everything out. Now in red, it's telling you, you need to select the sweep path. So click on it, click on the helix, because that's where we want the triangle to kind of follow and cut out. Click on it. Um, unfortunately, right off the bat, it adds it. And if you notice it says add, we want to click on remove. So click on remove. And if you notice, there it is. Kind of gives you a little preview. Awesome. There's our screw, or really bolt, sorry, in this case. Um, but similar to a screw because of the threading. So go ahead and click on the finish sweep, the green check, and check that out. How awesome is that? Okay. The only last touch we're going to do is, again, in industry, it's a professional edge. This corner right here, that's super sharp. Same thing with kind of that one. So what they tend to do is kind of shave off those super sharp corners. We're going to do that by uh, really revolving a triangle around. So it's kind of like using the chamfer tool, but we can't use the chamfer tool um, uh, right now because uh, we have a helix, like a spiral. If it was a circle, we could definitely, uh, meaning a circle on a flat plane on the same plane we could, um, but we can't do that here. So we're gonna go ahead and just click on one of the views. I'm gonna zoom in just to this top portion right here. Okay, uh, or even, let's see, I'm gonna click on the front. I just like using the front. It's an easier, uh, just to keep it consistent. Okay, so we are gonna create a sketch on this front plane, okay? Um, you, If you notice what I just did, you can do that too. Anytime you click on create new sketch, you can click on top front right plane here, or you can actually go and physically click on a feature, or you can click on the plane in the, the workspace, we call it here, okay? All right, so we're gonna draw another triangle, but this time we're gonna draw a right triangle. So I'm gonna draw a horizontal line going to draw a vertical line because there's my right corner and then I'm just going to connect them okay and it's going to be an isosceles which means um, I'm going to click on this equal sign I'm going to make this side equal to that side okay that just means it's cutting it at a 45 degree angle okay our next step this time we can actually use this tool 
um, because I'm going to create a point. Okay, I'm going to create a point here. I'm going to create a point right at that end point. There we go. Now I can use this coincident point or tool and I'm going to go ahead and connect uh, this corner with that point. And if you notice, it moved and I'm going to hit escape on my keyboard to get out of that tool. And if you notice now, I can now, the only way I can move this triangle is by changing the size. So we need to dimension this triangle so that it stays put. So I'm going to click on dimension. I'm going to click on this vertical side, bring it out. Um, and I'm going to make that, uh, let's see, about 1 divided by 32. And again, that's a little bit smaller than the pitch. Okay, that way it doesn't cut off actually that corner down below. Okay, so I just made it a little bit smaller. That was the only method to my madness. All right, so there you go. Um, now, the last thing we have to do is we need to create a center line um, or axis in which we're going to revolve and cut that little chamfer kind of out all the way around. So I'm going to click on line, but I'm going to make it a construction line. Um, it really doesn't matter. You really technically could keep it aligned, but just for our purposes, I'm going to also show you a new tool called Construction Line. If you notice, there's a yellow line that popped up. I'm going to click to start it. I'm going to bring my construction line all the way down, make sure it's vertical and goes through that origin, which it does. That's why it highlights it yellow. Click to make it stay. Now I'm going to go ahead, finish sketch. I'm going to zoom in. So you can kind of see what happens and even kind of click and rotate it so you can also see. Now we're going to use our revolve tool. So click on revolve. We need to select the face that you want to revolve, which is that triangle. And now we need to click on the revolve axis, which is that construction line that we drew. Um, and we don't want to add the material. Remember, we want to remove it because we want to cut off that little edge. So we're going to click on remove and check that out. There it is. There's our point. Pretty awesome, huh? Looks good. Go ahead, click on finish check to confirm, and there it is. There might be a little, that's just kind of, I think, part of the helix visual. So if I turn that off, uh, it might be able to come up. But there it is, if I zoom out, there's our bolt. Pretty awesome look. I'll turn it to an isometric. Still kind of far away, so if you want to, since you're done with uh, creating the bolt, I'm going to go ahead and hide those planes. Now when I click on this isometric corner, it zooms right into it, which is pretty awesome looking bolt.